right, so you assign the meaning to everything in your life. Anybody can say to you anything they want to, and you assign the meaning to that. All right, so say someone didn't even, didn't know English and you just started yapping about something or complaining about something, they wouldn't know, right? They wouldn't even know what you're talking about. So if you were smiling through it, you know, they'd go by your body language or emotions, right? Um, so in that moment that an emotion comes up that you don't prefer, you assign the meaning to that. Whatever, whatever the feeling is in your body, you assign it as good or bad. Okay, whatever people say to you, you assign it as good or bad. Okay, you put a meaning and a definition to their tone. You create the definitions and the meanings to every single word, event, person, thing in your life. Okay, you do that. All right. And when we say we are a certain person and we believe a certain way, we can, we'll create the evidence to support that. Okay. So whatever it is that our belief system is, we create evidence that proves to us that we are that person, that version of us that believes that. Okay. So you're giving your belief and trust into something. So why not give it to the life that you prefer to be living? Okay. Well, how do we do that? Okay. Well, every, you can think the big things. Okay. The biggest things, hold that, bring that up, conjure it up, see it in your mind, see the sight, smell the smells, get the feeling and then let it go. Okay. And then we're back into the little things. Okay. So every day, whether you turn right, turn left, what you might want to eat, who you might want to call, whether you're going to send an email to this person or that, or do this or do that. You follow your highest excitement in every moment, and that leads to the bigger things, okay? You never deny your authentic self. Otherwise, it's kind of a, um, well, all roads lead home, right? But it kind of stalls you. So how to get to the preferred version of you that you want to be living is every single second of every day, okay? So... If you're doing what is sounds exciting of the choices that you have available, that's following your highest excitement. That is heading towards the preferred version of reality that you want to be living. And sometimes it's baby steps. Sometimes you can't go from here to the, to the biggest thing you want, but you have to do it in the moment and you have to do it authentically. Every single time you compromise what you truly want, Okay. In the moment, then you're creating a reality that you don't actually prefer to be living. Okay. All right. So your strongest belief systems create your reality. Okay. So when we focus on something every single day, over and over and over, we create more of that in our life. Okay. So take some time out, practice. Sometimes we got to practice thinking about different things, different thoughts, or, or even imagining that we could have a life that we actually want instead of just, you know, suffering instead of just like surviving. How do we get past survival? How do we move towards the life that we really want to be living and get out of survival? Okay. We do it in baby steps. Okay. Every single moment of the choices you have, what feels better. And sometimes it's a choice between two things that both feel mm, the ones always got a little bit more of a buzz. Right. And so we do that and we move slowly, slowly, like a sloth sometimes towards that reality. And then we kind of hit a wall, right. Too, because Matt, we're waiting for mass consciousness, but there's still a lot, a lot to do, um, in, in our day based on what we focus on. So we, we are either in, in depression or, or we're feeling joy with the same set of circumstances every day. And, and we're making subtle choices, uh, based on our excitement. And then that brings more to us. I was, uh, listening to, uh, I think it was a Bashar channeling the other day about, um, choosing your highest excitement. Okay. Uh, choosing something that is of your belief system and your preferred you, and then you'll have something come into your life in, in about three days that will be reflective of that. Okay. So whether you were very pessimistic and negative about something or, or positive, and, it, and if you were negative about something and then something comes in, you can just redecide, redecide. So it's all about refocus, refocus, refocus. Even if you're like, well, why bother? What's, what is the day? What, 
what do I have to look forward to? Okay. Um, a lot of times that's about you not letting yourself just enjoy yourself. Okay. You feel guilty or you have to be a success. You have to study this. You have to make this. You have to earn this. You have to be, you know, somebody else's version of you. So you just get off your own back and let yourself be. And you realize that maybe you are doing your highest excitement that day just by, you know, watching a movie or, or sleeping or, or doing nothing. Okay. And if you have people around you, they're like, you're lazy. You're not successful. You're a loser, right? Bing, get them out of your life. Right. That was a bit of a tangent. Okay. So yes, yeah, so our strongest belief fits our reality. Also about feeling into the moment, you know, like if you're really excited about going somewhere and you're like, um, oh, you can't see this. Huh? See this. Well, that was funny, Crystal. Okay. So you're excited about going somewhere and then you go, oh, hmm. I, or you'll see something like a park or, or you'll get a hankering for a burger. You'll got something that'll come up and then you, that'll be more exciting than the thing that you originally set out to do. So then you change your directions. Okay. You feel into the moment and what feels nice. Okay. Then you shift. If it shifts, shift with it. Don't force yourself to follow through with what you originally chose. Okay. <clears throat> because you're creating worlds. Okay, you're creating realities every time you do that. And and it's um it's a challenge sometimes. You just have to refocus and refocus because um depression comes in, anxiety comes in, what will they think and who cares and who are they anyway? So I, I help people to unwind their fears of what you must be believing to feel that. Help them to logically unwind, well, what is it that you really are afraid of? What's the worst case scenario? And and help them, you know, kind of kind of um get get what's hiding in the shadows that's holding them back or what they're really afraid of and, and a lot of times it's just a program right it's just a habit because who are we who do we have to be afraid of as adults right we kind of afraid of all authority if we're still kind of afraid of our mothers or programs we have in our lineage from childhood um that that authority thing and so it can um, we can move it around to different people it, it's kind of an, an addiction it, it holds us back and, and it's sometimes we don't even, we don't even notice it. So it's important to just refocus when you do notice it. You know, if you go into depression, you do. And then when you come out of it, you go, okay, well, let's try again. Refocus, refocus on, on who am I? Okay. What would the version of me that I believe I am do? What would, how would the preferred version of me act in this situation? Okay. How would the triggerless me act in this situation? You're creating your reality based on the definitions that you put to everything in your reality. Okay. And then, and then some people say, well, yeah, but what am I going to do? There's like, I don't really enjoy anything. I don't really want to go anywhere. I don't really want to talk to anybody. I don't really want to do anything, you know? Okay. Then I ask him, well, um, is, and how do you feel about that? Right. Well, they feel guilty and they feel shameful and they feel horrible and they feel like a loser because they believe what? They believe that if people don't do anything, like if they just watch movies and write and walk and um, research fun things on the internet and look at cool pictures and laugh, that they're losers and that they need to feel guilty and shameful. That's not yours. That's somewhere in your ancestral line, some asshole put upon you, okay? Or put upon someone in your DNA, okay? That, it's funny when we track it down, they're like, well, basically, I really like that. Like, I like what I'm doing in a day. I like just reading and having no pressure. And I like um, sleeping and I like astro traveling and lucid dreaming and watching movies and looking at pictures on the internet and talking to people and doing whatever. I, I like it. So it's the programs that I use to judge myself to say that that's not the appropriate reality. I shouldn't be doing that. Okay. You push yourself around based on other people's definitions and the meaning that other people assigned and you think it's yours. And that's how we unconsciously create reality to consciously create reality. We identify what it is that we believe and we consciously know that we're the ones that are putting meaning to every word, every action, anything that happens in your life, you can be like, well, that must have needed to happen. You know, I guess, I guess it, ha it needed to happen that way. I, I needed to learn something there. You know, it's a, 
you know, whatever happens, you put the meaning to it and what that means to you. How you react is how you create what comes to you next. Okay. So just keep trying, keep refocusing, not trying, keep refocusing and refocusing and refocusing on the preferred you that you want to be living and on your belief system and be kind to yourself. Talk to yourself in your mind, you know, say, Hey, like, like with me, say, Hey, Crystal, what's, what's going on today? What, what did you feel about, you know, like that? Or like, um, I'm talking something out with myself and giving myself advice and, and getting out my belief systems so that I can see them, right? What is it that I'm really afraid of? Okay. Who's this big, bad wolf that's coming for me, right? And you don't need to remember things that happened to you necessarily as a child, um, even though that's probably what caused it or in your, your ancestral line or whatever. But just know that when you cure that, you're curing it for your ancestral line and, and, and you're putting that in your frequency field for others. Okay. And, and just be kind to yourself in your, in your mind and talk gentle to yourself and, and, and have a dialogue inside. You know, we have one anyway. We all have an inner dialogue. Have one that is healthy for you, that helps you to create to find out your beliefs and to find out your fears and comfort yourself and talk to yourself as if you're given a, your best friend advice. You really are your own best friend, your own family. And well, no one else exists, right? You project reality. You live in a holographic universe. So anyway, there's some of that. Bye for now. I love you.